Hey, Gender. Whoa. Whoa. That's a left. It's been a long time since I've hit the gavel. I've got to get used to that. I'll tone it down a bit. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and call our meeting to order. If we can go ahead and open our meeting with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. And I'd like to go ahead and have uh, Commissioner Wentworth lead us in our pledge this evening. Please stand and join me. Put your hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty. Uh, let's see here. We are, roll call is, uh, we have everyone here except for Commissioner Almasy. He can make it to this evening. And, uh, and Mr. Moody, but we do have some representation from uh, the department to give us a report here later this evening. So if I can uh, have any of the commissioners give us a um, motion to accept the minutes from last month. I motion to accept the Parks and Rec Commission meeting minutes from January 8th, 2020. And do I have a second? Okay. Would you like to go ahead and vote at this time? Okay. The motion passes 4-0. Thank you very much. As we go ahead and uh, move on, I'd like to go ahead and turn things over to the youth update. Have at it, guys. Hello. It's nice to be here again. I believe I addressed you guys back in October at our first uh, Parks and Recreation Commission meeting. Um, my name is Matthew. To reintroduce myself, Matthew Damien, and I'm with the Mayor's Youth Council. Uh, the Mayor's Youth Council offers students the opportunity to serve uh, in their community gain a wealth of experience in local government, and add their voice to discussions to shape the future of our city. Uh, I'd like to discuss some of our past uh, and upcoming events now. Um, in our last Mayor's Youth Council meeting, which was on uh, Wednesday, January 15th, uh, we got to meet our new city manager, Jacob Ellis. And uh, we also got to discuss the point in time homeless count uh, that was held in the city of Corona on January 29th. Uh, our city hall was the deployment site from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., and approximately 30 volunteers showed up to do the count in Corona, uh, alongside with the help of CityNet, Corona Police Department, uh, HOPE Team, and the Riverside County Representative. Uh, and our next meeting will be on Wednesday, February 19th. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello. My name is Giovanni. And from April, I mean, March 30th to April 4th, we're going to be holding a library, a library, National Library Week, and we're going to be doing an escape room. And for some of the themes that we're going to be, we're going to be doing zombies, time travel, and um, yeah, that's, that's it. Thank you. All righty. Thank you. Um, also in the month of April, we have our annual DIA, or Diversity in Action. That will be on April 25th. Uh, the, it's a Saturday. And um, we have a large budget remaining for the rest of the year, so I think we're going to go pretty big on that. Nice. Hi, I'm Riley. I'm the Secretary of the Teen Advisory Council. We're also partnering with Maker Exchange this year to do a bunch of Hogwarts-themed escape rooms, such as Prisoner of Azkaban, as we're celebrating... Um, the anniversary of the movie release. We are also going to be doing a Triwizard Tournament maze for that as well. And that's all we have coming up. Thank you very much. All right, that sounds pretty exciting. Fantastic. Great. You guys are doing a great job. I had a question. Questions, commissioners? Yes. Just Mr. Matt, you yes. said that the homeless count was completed? Yes, yes. We did that on the uh, 29th, I believe. Yeah, January 29th. Uh, we had the homeless count. And um, what we did was, I, I believe, we split up into five teams for per sector of the city. Uh, and they did went out and did that homeless count with uh, the help of uh, the police and, uh, like I said, CityNet and the Riverside County representative. Great. 
when and where will that information be posted? Um, I don't have that information currently, but um, I believe I can get someone to get it for you. I believe Angela can, she's watching right now, I'm pretty sure, so she'll probably look into that. Hey, Angela. So thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, first I'll address TAC. Giovanni, welcome to your first uh, commission meeting. You did a great job. Um, you mentioned for National Library Week that you're going to have some escape rooms. Is that going to be all ages? Do you know the ages that you guys are targeting for that? It's mostly targeted towards teens, as it is going to be more of a challenging escape room. So we would definitely target towards an older audience. Great. And then you mentioned the Hogwarts-themed escape rooms, which, which is that separate? Than the National Library Week, this I missed the time of that. This is separate. So this, so National Library Week is going on in March and April. It'll be March 30th to April 4th for National Library Week, and then in June we have our Hogwarts themed um, escape rooms and alumni gala, and then we also have for the summer reading program a Tri Wizard tournament um, maze that we're doing. Awesome, that all sounds really great. I'm looking forward to hearing more. And Matthew, thank you for coming from Mayor's Council. Um, I know that there was a the new mayor took um, place, so do you guys turn over and now work under uh, Mr. Steiner then? Is that how that works, or do you stay with Mr. Scott the whole time? Yeah, we are with uh, Mr. Steiner now. I think we met him, I think, uh, two meetings ago, or... I'm not sure, maybe we did not meet him yet. I can't remember, that was a while ago, like two months ago. <laughs> but um, I'm sure we'll meet him soon if we didn't. But um, yeah, we are under his, his wings now. Okay, got it. All right, well, thank you and good luck and uh, look forward to having your updates. Thank you. Okay, if there's anything else from the commissioners, we're gonna go ahead and move on. Communications from the public. Are there any communications at this time? All righty, then we are going to go and move on to administrative reports. Parks. Moses. <coughs> Good evening. Um, filling in for Mr. Moody this evening, and I'll be providing some updates for the month of January. Okay. Um, is the PowerPoint, is the PowerPoint presentation available? Uh, no, the parks updates. Did it get sent over? Okay, well, I have the information here, so I'll go in and go over it. <laughs> so for the month of January, we did have 308 tree trims um, and 571 inches of uh, removals. We also had a, a windstorm, our first windstorm of the season on uh, January 29th. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, the staff, and as well as our contractor, responded to 52 calls for service for 52 trees that were down, either trees or limbs. Um, we do, I believe Mr. Moody had provided some information previously on the Urban Forest Grant. So that is taking place. We are currently install, or the contractor, I should say, is currently installing the uh, wraps. And I'll there's a picture of it here, so I'll make sure you guys get a copy of it. So there's 173 locations that the wraps are being installed. And it basically explains why the tree is being removed, um, the benefits of removing dead and diseased trees or trees that pose risks and how to keep the urban forest healthy. And that'll be up for about three to four weeks, and it's got some links and other information on there for residents to see. Uh, after that, the trees will be removed, and we'll be starting the removals by late February and all through March. And then after that, we'll work on uh, creating a list of plantings, because there's two trees for every uh, removal that will be planted. For graffiti, we completed 111 graffiti requests, um, which came out to 6494 square feet of uh, graffiti abated for the month of January. We also uh, performed a city park clean up in the month of January. We had not done one for the month of Decemb uh, December. So we got back out there. Uh, we also had uh, boarded up the windows on the armory to keep uh, any homeless population out of there because they had taken, uh, taken some space in there. So we boarded up the windows and uh, got that place secure. Uh, for the turf removal that's going on throughout the city, uh, zone 10 and 7 are currently just finishing up their 90-day maintenance period. Uh, 2001 and Zone 14. Zone 14 is basically the McKinley and Hayden Valley area. 2001-1 is kind of spread out throughout 
different parts of the city, Foothill Parkway, uh, some along Ontario and Taylor in those areas. Um, those are currently just beginning their maintenance period. Uh, Magnolia, uh, Taylor, Montoya, Buena Vista, Foothill, and Ontario are all uh, as well planted and mulched and walkthroughs were completed and maintenance periods have begun there as well. And lastly, we also installed some new petway stations that Tracy helped us on. Um, so we installed some additional ones at Lincoln Park. Uh, Ontario Park received two. Santana Park received three. El Cerrito received two stations. Promenade received two stations. Stagecoach Park received one. And Brent, Brentwood Park received two. And that's all the updates I have for this month. Any, any questions I can answer anything? Great job on the wind and clean up and everything after that. Great job. Thank Just you. a question on the winds come every year. Is there any place that we can get information on what we can do to prevent damage, to prevent trash from spreading, to prevent trees and stuff from breaking when the winds come? We don't currently really have anything in place that, you know, but we could work on getting something up, you know, precautionary measures, what to do and stuff, numbers to call if you should, you know, have a tree down, you know, what number to call. Uh, typically, we'll come to our front desk or we'll go through dispatch and they'll contact us as well. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, I will be excusing myself in a few minutes because I have a saw girl softball practice to attend. <laughs> so, you have anything? In, in regards to the Griffith Park update? Griffith Park update. Oh, nope. Tracy's okay. that one. Alrighty. Well, All right. then, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we will move on then to the uh, Griffin Park update. Okay, good evening, commissioners. Tonight, a quick update on the Griffin Park reopening project. Um, we anticipate the construction drawings for the new ADA sidewalk, lighting, and parking lot to be completed by the end of next week. Um, we've also been working on the design for the two main amenities, which we are going to be adding to Griffin Park, based on input from the community, uh, which are a dog park and an exercise or fitness area. The dog park area will be located in the upper portion of the park, which is a relatively flat area. The fitness area will be located adjacent to the existing parking lot. So first, we're going to show you a little bit of details about the dog park. Uh, the dog park will consist of two separate areas, a small and a large dog park. These areas will have separate entries and space between the two parks to keep the good separation between the dogs, hopefully help keep it a calm place, a fun place for the dogs to be. Uh, the large dog park is approximately 6,300 square feet, and the small dog park will be approximately 4,500 square feet. Uh, the dog parks will feature de decomposed granite, or DG, areas along the perimeter as well as grass and shade trees. There will be benches for the humans and some obstacle equipment for their four-legged furry friends to enjoy. The cost for the dog park is approximately $125,000 in total. Uh, these are some of the pictures of some of the amenities that will be going in. Um, in addition to leash posts, uh, petway stations and benches, there are going to be um, items such as the ring jump, hilltop challenge, and crawl tunnel for additional exercise opportunities. Now, this is one of the main reasons which we wanted to bring this back to you guys tonight. Uh, this is regarding the fitness area. Um, so what you see before you is a preliminary design. Uh, we're looking to open up a discussion tonight regarding the amenities for this area, which may affect the final design. So that's really the last key piece we have to uh, finalize before we move forward with bidding this project. Uh, currently, we propose to eliminate the sidewalk, existing sidewalk around the, the former playground area and regrade it to provide a, a flat, accessible space. Um, this area currently right now shown is approximately 2,700 square feet. Um, the blue area is um, rubberized surfacing where you see pieces of equipment. Um, there's a little bit of art artificial turf in the center there, just kind of an open space. And then you see a, a, the brown area is a decomposed granite or DG area. And there's trees that surround the area to help provide some shade. Um, regarding the, the fitness equipment, there's definitely a wide variety available. Um, while we want to provide the public with modern equipment, uh, to attract people, which we know is vital to the health of this park, 
uh, we understand that we need to balance you know, ongoing maintenance costs and replacement costs as well. So we're going to show you a few different concepts or, or options and open it up for discussion to get your input. So this first selection is what is currently in the design. Um, it's, it's very basic equipment um, with mostly stationary pieces. Um, the cost for this equipment and installation is approximately $46,000, but that is excluding servicing. Um, right now we're being advised by our landscape architect that most of the um, equipment manufacturers are requiring rubberized surfacing to be placed below uh, the, the equipment, which does raise the cost up a little bit. Um, the servicing cost for the area would be anywhere between forty to fifty-five thousand um, dollars. Some advantages to this type of equipment: um, there's lower maintenance maintenance costs to it. There's not a lot of moving parts that we have to worry about, no pneumatics or anything like that. Um, it's similar to the circus circuit equipment that is currently at Lincoln Park, and that's very popular. I always see people using that equipment. Um, one advantage to this type of equipment, it's modular. We can scale up or down to, to um, help with costs for the area, the number of pieces. Um, some of the disadvantages, though, of course, is you know it may be considered a little bit older type of equipment. Um, it may lack appeal. And we want to know, you know, we want to make sure that we're prov providing the right equipment for people to come. We know that Griffin Park needs to have people that go there frequently to make sure that the, the park stays healthy and vibrant. That said, this is a different style of uh, equipment. Um, it's a one-piece fitness gym. Um, it, less surfacing will be required for a piece like this because it's more compact of a footprint, um, being closer to about 1,500, 1,600 square feet of surfacing. Um, there are different sized units available. This is like a medium-sized one, um, which costs approximately $47,000. Um, an installed cost would probably be around $85,000. and Servicing would be another $31,000, but that would be a much smaller amount than what we see with our initial design. Um, this is a, a Thrive system from Game Time, and I think their, their goal here is to kind of provide some pre-configured uh, uh, units for people. Um, it combines both stationary and some pneumatic equipment. Um, this particular uh, layout is approximately $36,000 just for the equipment. Um, if you add in uh, ins installation, it's about 65,000. Um, but the surface area, the amount of area that this takes up is only about 1,000 square feet. So your surfacing costs start to decrease a lot, which would be closer to about uh, $22,000. Uh, this is just a little bit more up close view of some of the components that were in the various um, designs that you've seen so far. Um, this is muscle fitness equipment. Um, it can, you know, we can choose whatever pieces we want and under this circumstance and just kind of pick and choose what we'd like to see. Um, most of these do contain some pneumatic devices, though, but, and moving parts, which, you know, are, in speaking with our maintenance uh, team, they have a little bit of concerns about. We want to make sure that if we put something in there, we can maintain it. We don't want to have the public go and see equipment that is either unusable because it's been vandalized or we don't have replacement parts for it. That would kind of defeat the purpose. Um, this is aerobic fitness equipment. You can see um, from this, and I think the previous slide as well, um, there are some um, accessible pieces as well. So that's kind of nice to be able to uh, intersperse those together. You know, we just want to make sure, again, that we, we utilize equipment in this design that the public will, will utilize. In. Um, we want to make sure that we can maintain it for them as well. And lastly, this is just a sharp left turn uh, to throw out an option is that maybe we don't put any fitness equipment. Maybe we do put just a small shade area in there um, for people to kind of enjoy the view, um, to rest after they take their dogs for a play, you know, play session. Uh, with that, that concludes my presentation. So I thank you for your time, and we look forward to hearing your thoughts and feedback regarding this item. And I'm happy to answer any questions which you may have. Commissioner Wood, do you have any questions? Yes. As far as the shade picnic and the exercise equipment, is it an either-or thing with the budget? We can either have one or the other. We can't have both. 
it's it would be a, a big stretch right now. We're already at the top, actually a little bit over our budget. Um, for we're going to need some more money to be able to complete some of the amenities there. Um, and unfortunately, shade is a, can be a very expensive thing. That's why we're trying to use trees and, and stuff to augment and provide shade in those areas versus a shade structure, which can be fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars. So it, it does tend to be a one or the other with the budget that we're working with. Um, I'm torn because um, I don't, I've never used the Lincoln track. Circuit equipment. Yeah, circuit thing. Um, I don't know how popular it is, so I don't, you know, I, is there statistics? I, I mean, that would be hard to get statistics on about how popular something like that is and the need for another one versus putting in a shade structure with the option to add other amenities down the road if we came into more money. Um, one thing I would say is I do definitely want that drinking fountain, that newer one with the bottle filler and the pet one. There no will be a what. drinking fountain near okay. the uh, fitness area. Yes. Okay. And even if it wasn't a fitness area, I would like to be see a, that. A drinking fountain. And I like that one with the dog option because we have the dog park. Correct. Um, Outside of that, I'm, and I, I've never seen this one-piece fitness system. This is very cool looking in the, um, <clears throat> how, how many, how big is this one-piece fitness system? Like how, how many people do you think can be using this at the same time? It's, you know, I don't have the numbers of activities on this one, but, um, the footprint, it's about, I, I wanted to say uh, 30 by or 40 by 50, kind of, uh, if you imagine a rectangular you know, shape. It's probably got upwards of seven to 10 different activities that individuals could be performing at the same time. So um, I think it all just depends on your preference. Some people may look at this and not see all the individual activities that you can use it for. It's like me, I would see that and go, I don't know what to do with this. But uh, <laughs> my only thought is, I'm leaning some, some people may like that. So I, I do like the one piece system. Um, thinking that if you go with your family instead of doing a circuit, you can all be doing different things and still be together. Right. Um, I like that idea. It's something different that mm -hmm. we don't have. We do have. Is the circuit one being maintained at Lincoln, or is that being pulled out? It's it's being maintained. At okay. Yes. Um, so it's different. So if we were going to go a fitness one, I might lean a little bit towards that one, only because it's something different. But I wouldn't be opposed to having the shade area with a hopeful future amenity add next to that. I, I'll let my other commissioners weigh in. Um, I'm glad you mentioned the possibility of not having any equipment because that's exactly what was coming to my mind. Mostly maybe because the amount of public outreach that goes into this, the overall vision and theme for this park, this is a very hilly area. Um, it's an area where if you're going to be active in it, you're going to be hiking and you're going to be enjoying the views. You're not going to be walking on pavement. If you bring your dog and you go outside of the dog park, that's what you're going to experience. You're going to be walking on a trail or the dirt. And so in my mind, what use is the equipment going to be for the community? It's hidden. It's in the back. Um, it might not get used at all. This is not Lincoln Park with a track and a circuit which is why you go there. You walk the track and you do the circuit. This park doesn't have that kind of vision for it for usage. So I think that the qu equipment is actually out of place for the overall um, atmosphere of the park. So that's why I was leaning towards, my immediate thought was, well, why don't we have a community gathering space with shade um, so that people with dogs can sit and talk. You can possibly have dog training programs. You can have other types of events that the staff could future program for this park, given the space to do in it. And um, if we had to pick equipment, I do not like the one-piece fitness system. I think it is upper body 
um, too much upper body and it's too confusing. If you had to do equipment, I would only go with the Thrive system that has like a recumbent bike and things that it gets great for Jason Last, but nobody else. I get it. <laughs> the rest of us, I, like myself and Tracy, we can't even reach this stuff. This is a joke. We're just like, hello. So this, so in that kind of thing, I immediately it's not really accessible. So, and I, I, I just don't like the accessibility features of it. But I am leaning and was when we were first talking about this park to consider what the outreach is to the community and long range vision. And I don't think that we got there when we talked to the community. I don't think we got enough feedback. And I'm not confident in recommending equipment. I'm more confident in recommending a community space, a sitting space, a shade space, and then allowing this park to organically develop as people use it, they can come forward and they will have other recommendations for this park. So that that's my stance. Your turn. <laughs> Thank you. I would have to piggyback on uh, Commissioner Wentworth in regards to keeping it simple right now with a, uh, a shade structure or a picnic structure uh, for being kind of just a passive park. Again, people are going up there to take their dogs. Um, it's off the beaten path, like like they were saying. People, they would really have to find and search that there's going to be exercise equipment up there. And I think for the expense that you're going to be putting exercise equipment, it's not going to get its bang for its buck. Where I think the shade structure would get more use. And again, allow the neighborhood to come forward if they come to us at future meetings and say, hey, we like to have this amenity or that amenity, and allow it over the next three to five, seven years develop with other amenities as seeing fit for that neighborhood. So that's where I would lean is just keeping it to a sage structure and keeping it very basic. Any other comments from any of the other commissioners after talk here? What about something, um, what Commissioner Wentworth said about um, a community gathering space where maybe you could do dog training or whatever else she mentioned. What if it was, I don't know, like a very simple band shell, like a city park type thing where like you have that community for like that lesson type thing or something, is that? I think one of the ideas we had battered around was having um, the police and their program for the dog watchers, uh, you know, have them have a site where they could teach that program as well, because we know that the most important thing for this park is to make sure we can program it so that people are there on a regular basis using it. That's the best thing possible for this park. And I think that a, sh a shade structure would absolutely make that more programmable than um, exercise equipment, unfortunately. And with the prevalence of things like CrossFit, I don't know that people you know, seek out going to a park to do their exercise as much as maybe they did in the past. We have a speaker card. I'd like to go ahead and invite Mr. Morgan to come forward. Test, test. I guess you've had your time. Thank you. I guess I'm, it's, already, it's already up. <laughs> so so I, I think my, my comments or my uh, observations is similar to what I, I think, honestly, the best thing about that park is the views. It's really a spectacular little park and and I kind of would like a place to just hang out and just and shades like the shade sales they're pretty they're pretty cost effective I mean it's basically just poles and some shades and I know shales and they go away after a few years but they're pretty inexpensive to replace it's probably cheaper than keeping up an actual wood structure and you know you could put a couple of those in and maybe sprinkle some you know almost the circuit equipment around the trails and kind of have something real simple, just the same kind of stuff they have at Lincoln Park around the circuit, the little benches and, and the little uh, kind of chin-up bars and that kind of stuff. It's pretty basic and it, they last a long time and and just kind of split the baby a little bit and almost have like a Lincoln Park hill circuit thing because there are pretty cool little trails through the park and you could just kind of sprinkle them around. If we had, you could make a circuit in that park, you know, but I wouldn't think anybody's going to go there and think it's like junior gym you know, it's like a little small UFC, and then outfit it like that, you know, actual real-life equipment. You just put the same stuff that you put in the other parks and, 
kind of sprinkle it around. But I vote for the shade, you know, a place to hang out and, you know, the neighborhood to, to be there. You know, that's, that's going to be the most inviting thing, especially on a summer day, you know, in the evenings and stuff like that. Just having plenty of shade would be really handy with the trees and shade structure. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any other comments from the commissioners? I have one more comment, sorry. I did want to say thank you for letting us have like the, the feedback and for involving us in the vision of that park. Um, I appreciate that and your reports, so thank you. Okay, I, um, I'd like to go ahead and kind of, since we've discussed this, see if we can make a motion for a recommendation that uh, I recommend that we um, we choose, as we spoke, the, the shade structure with the benches that they, they showed us. I know that these are preliminary drawings, but I, I think that what I'm going to say is that we motion to support that venue and that use of space with the dog parks as, as our recommendation to move forward on this project. I'll second that motion. Okay, we had a motion and a second. At this time, go ahead and place your vote. Welcome to my phone. Yep. Mind you, did yours come up to vote? There we go. Okay, so the motion passes 4 0 as recommendations to accept a shade structure with the dog park at this time. Thank you. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and move on to library and rec services update. And I guess we can go with the uh, the development impact fees, diff fees, and bond repayment monthly report. Anybody wanted to update us on that there? Good evening. Uh, thank you for this chance to, to bring this information back to you. Um, so this is a follow-up from our meeting of last month mm -hmm. and this is just going to bring back um, the developer impact fee balances on a monthly basis as well as talking about the the park bond loan um, so going through the first fund this is fund 215 the public meeting facilities fund and just a couple items to point out is um, when you're looking at the expenditures budget for these items it's going to include any carryovers that were from the prior year. So it'll include new money approved for the, by the council for this fiscal year as well as carryovers. And capital project monies can carry from one fiscal year to, till the next until the project's completed. Okay. And the information provided any positive numbers you see on here are adding to or increasing fund balance and any negative numbers are decreasing the available fund balance. So the top section, just kind of walking you through this, um, Fund 215, there was a beginning balance of 293,532. We're estimating revenue at 79,588 for the fiscal year, less the full expenditure budget of 64,695. And then reducing for long-term receivables and deposits, that gives us an estimated fund balance at the end of the fiscal year of 252,858, okay? Now that, of course, is taking into consideration the full entire expenditure budget, and that the full amount of estimated revenues are received. So then if you move to the next line down in the blue box, that's the actual cash balance that's available for appropriations as of today. So based on the cash that we received through, actually through December 31st, is 184,382. And each of these funds are set, out in a, set up in a similar format. Now the way the accounting entries work, um, we're always going to be on a basically a one month delay when I give this information to you because we don't have all of the accounting information completed yet for June, I'm sorry, for January by the time I have to post the for the February meeting. So, so then moving on to fund 216, which is the Aquatic Center Fund. Again, started out the fiscal year with a uh, fund balance of 293,500. I have a question. Sure. The revenue estimates, what are those based on? So we work closely with the community development department to see what projects are in process so that we can um, tell how many units we think are going to be built in the upcoming fiscal year, and that's what those revenue estimates are based on. So it's based on the, the units times the, the fee. So, so, and again, one thing to mention is that if there's any changes in those developers' plans, these numbers can fluctuate quite a bit. 
So moving on to fund 216, there is a beginning fund balance of 293,502 with revenue estimates of 45,474, less the expenditure budget of 114,276, and less long-term receivables of 34,410 to give us an ending fund balance, an estimated ending fund balance of 190,290. The available cash balance as of December 31st was 150,920. And then moving on to fund 217, which is the Parks and Open Space Fund. We had a beginning fund balance of 7,713,605. Estimated revenue estimates of 235,568, less the amount that actually transfers out to the park bond. So taking 76.3% of those revenue estimates is um, 179,738. And the full expenditure budget of 4,423,658 and long-term receivables of 2,292,733 gives us an estimated fund balance of June, at June 30 of $1,053,044. As of December 31st, the actual cash balance available was 1,008,501. Any questions on those fund balances? Did we get a breakdown on the park's basic amenities? I can't recall. That, I mean, that's the largest item here, and it just keeps going time over time. So I was wondering. I think we'd need to confirm with Mr. Moody on exactly what's included in that project. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure exactly what's included. Okay. So are these are just... I think I asked that last Basically. month, and he gave me a spiel about he, what... Yeah, he did. ...was, but not necessarily specific. And it's not exactly... Okay. All right. It's just difficult to tell what's completely done, undone, and planned, but without that as well. So um, so if I'm understanding you correctly, uh, we moved $179,738 over into the general fund into that specific area to be held set aside based on um, the resolution that the council passed. Is that correct? So that's, we didn't actually move that. That's the estimate for this fiscal year. Okay. So then if we move on to the next attachment, which was the park bond information, that shows what we've actually uh, done so far this fiscal year. So the park bond loan repayment balance as of July 1st was uh, $9,275,721.86. So then included in this uh, report is by month, the actual revenue that transferred from Fund 217 to the general fund um, in order to start um, being applied towards that balance. So as of December 31st, 175,824.85 was the total. Um, at the time this report was prepared, we did not have the January final number yet, but I can share with you this week, we did um, post that entry and it's actually another $108,000 um, that came in in January. So that will be added to this total. So then that will be, as we run through this through the rest of the fiscal year, of course we'll keep updating you based on the actuals and then that's the money that will, anything is received in this fiscal year will be available to use towards, applied towards projects in the next fiscal year. So I'm still a little unclear about this park bond loan repayment. So this is money that's coming from fund uh, 217. Yes. To the general fund. Yes. To repay. Mm -hmm. And then is it supposed to be used towards parks from the general fund? Yes, so that was the direction we got from Mr. Lansdale when That's he was here. what I remember, but why are we transferring it then instead of just leave, I guess? So, so when it stays in Fund 217, it's very restricted in its usage. It can only be used on very specific development-related items. But if it's actually, and this is where we um, come up with a way when we were speaking with Mr. Lansdale, is if it actually goes towards paying down the park bond, so it moves to the general fund, but then when it's in the general fund, it's less restrictive in its uses, so he said that when it would move to the general fund, then it would be available to be used on park-related items. Now, is it earmarked where it has to be used towards park-related items, or it can be used towards park-related items? No, our, our direction in, in the ordinance is, is actually that it will be designated and delineated in the general fund. 
so that it has to be used for park related items. And has there been any park related item proposals using this money or, or is this just gaining dollars until what? this is this is the first fiscal year when we've handled it this way like I said with that was direction under Mr. Lansdale so anything received in this fiscal year will be available to use towards projects in the next fiscal year so um, we haven't see departments are preparing their budgets right now um, we have not seen anything yet um, nothing's even been turned into it yet us yet on that budget process so we haven't seen anything yet that would be proposing use of these funds and the proposed use of the funds is directly to parks, not recreation. Is that right? It's it's park and park maintenance related items. If you read the ordinance, which I can send to you and the staff can send to you, that's that's what it's for. Um, this resolution is not new. It was just adopted in a reworded version. So the count, the current council wanted to maintain uh, the resolution, but say that. The money that was going to the general fund to repay the loan couldn't be spent on other things that should stay in parks. So when we started this loan repayment, we were at like 14 million. Now we're at nine. We they have in the last couple of years, two three years, there has been a substantial transfer of millions of dollars to the general fund, fund 217, to pay back that bond, and it has not been accounted specifically towards parks. When it goes into the general fund, it can be used for anything. So this council has said, you know, let's use it towards park-related amenities and maintenance. Now, is so, that only moving forward, or is that backdated? No, no, it's not backdated. All, that money that went into the general fund two years ago is gone. Okay. So okay. that went on whatever. So there's no, so my purpose of having um, this report in, initially is to, for the commission to be able to keep track of this money so that when the staff comes forward, like with Griffin Park with these projects, we understand and can explain to the public how much is available and how much we are able to do because the requests from the public and the needs in the city are quite large with the population, but the amount of money available to do these things is very, very small. But up until now, we have not been able to provide as a commission, a concise answer. We have always had to go back to the regular budget. So with help from staff now and this report, we can do that. So that's that's kind of where we're at. Great, thank you. And thank you for the clarification. I appreciate that. You're welcome. And we'll just, going forward, we'll plan to um, attach this every month with the, the agenda. Mm -hmm. That would be perfect. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, and I maybe it's not towards you, but <laughs> maybe. So on this item, as we move to the to the money into the general fund for parks, amenities, maintenance, and so forth, I was wondering if the trailhead that we talked about with um, Auto Center, I've sat through many of Santa Ana River Trail meeting, and I know that between the county and the city, we are trying to do that uh, staging, and can this money go towards that effort of main maintenance and, and staging that area? Is that, if you don't know, obviously you can get back to me later, but I was wondering, I think it falls under that, but I wanted to ask. Yeah, yeah um, actually I'm not sure um, whether or not that would be the case. Um, at this point, I mean, determining who would own the property would have some um, uh, involvement in that regard. Um, I think the deal was that the <coughs> county would set it all up and then we had to maintain it. So but, yeah, yeah, that, that, that was is kind of, discussion. it would yeah. be, but this would also, this would possibly fall under this budget item? Is Potentially. That, okay. Yeah, we would just have to clarify that. Okay. Is that something that you can come back next month with? Because I would be absolutely on board with that. I know that's something that we've been working on, getting that Santa Ana Trail connection and having that um, surface club um, staging area. So is that easily available? No, actually, that would probably be really premature. Uh, okay. In that, um, one, there's still in really the discussion phases about the development of that property at all. Um, and until there is some sense of what that looks like, we couldn't even begin to estimate the cost of maintenance over time. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I may any? add one other item to that. Um, I, we haven't programmed any money for or any projects yet because we're in, in the process of evaluating our park equipment. Uh, if you may recall, it was one of the items that we want to do is evaluate our existing equipment come up with a plan for replacement based on need, and also survey the community for future 
amenities that they may want. So we're, we're in a little bit of a holding pattern. So you may not see a lot of activity with that. So we get that information back in. Any other questions from the commissioner? I was going to say thank you, because that, that is the whole point of showing us the process of where the money's going. And then the commission hopefully will be able to talk about setting priorities once that information comes in on what needs to be done and what the community wants to be done. And that's why making decisions on Griffin Park is so difficult, because we don't have maybe all that we need to know. And that's why I was asking about the that trailhead, because um, I would like to know if that would not come out of this money, that that would be in a different space. So, you know, the maintenance on that. <laughs> I'm always advocating for more money for parks. <laughs> I know. But that's why I wanted clarification, because it's a, it's a just like opening Griffin Park, it's a potential another source of ongoing maintenance. So it's something that falls under this and may fall under this item. And then, you know, we should at least know where the money's going. So that's kind of why I brought it to your attention. We have another speaker card. If please come forward, Mr. Morgan. Good evening again. Um, so just to add some context, and I think to to try to answer the question that Ms. McCreary seemed to be asking. So the, at at my recollection of the council meeting when this when this matter came up and sort of got kicked to you guys was that the Parks Commission was to be tasked with setting the guidelines for how this money was supposed to be spent. It, this money is intended for new park amenities, you know, to bring them online. And so it was supposed to be tasked with the, the, the Parks Commission was supposed to be tasked with deciding what constituted a new amenity, what constituted maintenance, where, you know, to, to, to see whether the money was gonna be spent on emptying trash or putting new things into parks and and deciding the boundaries of you know the, the setting the limits for how this money was supposed to be spent that was a big part of the discussion and I haven't seen that discussion here I think I've brought it up before it's nice to see this update and I, I want to thank Ms. Sinton for bringing it. it it makes it much more clear what's going on and but as far as the priorities you know I I think we need to have that discussion as well you know obviously we need to talk about the needs but we also need to sort of have an idea what kind of rules we're talking about, you know, what kind of guidelines, because again, you guys are supposed to be the ones to go input it back to the council and have them, you know, I guess codify the recommendations that you guys would make based on your discussions so as what's best for the parks. So thank you very much. Thank you. And there is a Nexus report that shows what park infrastructure needs to be built in each park and how much of that was done. So when you look at the park, it's not just what you see in front of you. There's future planning for each park with a lot of infrastructure that hasn't gone in yet. Fund 217 was intended for that infrastructure that hasn't gone in yet. And to take a one-time development fee that's meant to be used in creating a space for a growing community to utilize and utilize more fully, that's what that fund is for. When you take Fund 217, move it into the general fund and use it for park maintenance, then you're not building your infrastructure. But we can't make decisions about infrastructure, equipment, or anything when we don't have the information that we need on the backlog on deferred maintenance, and then match that to the missing infrastructure that is yet to be built so that we can set the priorities. So I think we're just, Right now, we're still not even able to make those kind of judgment calls. That kind of clarifies what Mr. Morgan is saying. Okay, thank you. All righty. Let's go ahead and move on to the next item is the uh, summer concerts for 2020. Good evening, uh, commissioners, colleagues, members of the public. Jason Lass, Recreation Services Manager, and it is my pleasure to be here this evening to provide a quick update on our summer concert series for 2020. This presentation was also shared with the Public Service Committee at their uh, meeting last week. Our proposal for 2020 is not just four, but five nights of summer magic. <laughs> Why? This event brings our community together, provides meaningful experiences, and creates the quality of life that makes living here in Corona so special. <clears throat> This year, we are revisiting our concert series model. Uh, we not, or sorry, we want to not only expand it, but give it an injection of some new energy. 
This year, it's all about the experience. We want to play up the block party type environment by encouraging residents to be a part of the fun. Uh, we'll be updating our marketing to uh, better reflect the experience we envision. We are uh, mixing up the talent to include some new acts, uh, seeking a variety of food options. Of course, the partners will be back to fundraise for our parks with their popular beer and wine garden. Uh, last, we are seeking to build in activities that encourage the audience to be a part of the experience. Uh, this could be guided dances, games, or even photo opportunities. We want to be a little bit creative here. For our talent, we have an amazing group of artists that will be coming through town. Uh, July 9th, we are kicking the series off with Latin Nation. Last year, they absolutely packed our dance floor. Uh, their performance is wide-reaching and has a little something for everyone, whether English or Spanish-speaking. July 16th, we are mixing things up with Hit Me 90s, taking us back to one of our most eccentric decades. I didn't get that. Whoa. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so one of our eccentric decades uh, with Oh So Generous Grunge Rock, or sorry, Oh So Serious Grunge Rock uh, to the boy band Pop Perfection and everything in between. July uh, 23rd, uh, we welcome a big fish in the summer concert scene, The Ravelers, with a nonstop classic rock set list full of favorites. July 30th, we go smooth and get into the groove with hometown heroes, the KTEL All-Stars, bringing you the super hits of the 70s. And then August 6th, last but not least, we are going to bring down the house with Stone Soul, a crowd favorite and an undeniable tour de force of energy. For library and recreation services, fun is what we do. Our mission uh, with the concert series is to provide an experience-driven event that reflects the quality of life that our residents have grown to expect. The summer concert series uh, attracts nearly 1,000 participants each night. The Corona Parks Foundation is, of course, an active partner. Uh, fund raised uh, from their concessions go back to our community. The event provides a point of entry to library and recreation services and all that we do for the community. And it, of course, further strengthens our bond with uh, our regular uh, residents that we interact with on a quite regular basis there. Uh, the series encourages involvement and learning and, of course, provides an opportunity to get out, have some fun, and be a part of something special. Of course, our vision for 2020 has a sticker price. As part of our budgeting for the fiscal year 2021, we are requesting additional 3,600 uh, to add a fifth night, uh, which we anticipate will be offset with sponsorship and vendor fees. Uh, we believe this is a small price for a big impact to the community. A quick comparison of uh, past, our past year uh, versus our proposed 2020 uh, yields a very modest request. Uh, the bulk of our need is really about uh, funds for the band and stage. Our staffing needs are minimal with full-time staff flexing, uh, part-time being offset with recycling grant funds, and volunteers uh, helping in a variety of different capacity. Sponsorship uh, information uh, for both our 4th of July and concert series will be going out very soon. Uh, we have cleaned up our sponsorship list and hope uh, to welcome back those who have previously supported us, as well as get some uh, new businesses and community groups in and on that. This presentation uh, was brought to you uh, for information purposes. Our budget request is included in our department's recommendations for fiscal year 2021. Uh, for entertainers, sponsors, or vendors seeking more information, I do encourage you uh, to reach out to our department. Uh, I have our recreation supervisor, Sadie Cowden's information listed on the screen right now. Other than that, we are excited that summer is on the way. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. have any questions because this is my second time through but I just want to say that I'm excited that we added another night and that this event is growing I think that the city is in need of family fund programming and as we've seen this last year your staff has gone through tremendous amount of effort with very little supporting budget to make that happen with these concerts with the Halloween event and you know, the great turnout that we had for the winter event. So this, I see more participation this year than four years ago, three years ago. So it's just coming up and up. So I think your efforts are paying off. So I wanted to just let you know that it's visible and thank you. 
And I wanted to add, I'm super excited about the 90s pop group. <laughs> um, my, uh, my peers will uh, be coming in force to, uh, to July 16th. I already put it on my calendar. <laughs> we'll see if uh, Brittany Left Eye Aguilera can give you a shout out. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> you good? All righty. Thank you for your report. Uh, let's go ahead and move uh, down to uh, Commission's Nuts and Bolts presentation. Wow, I think I'll do this one. All right. <laughs> um, I, hopefully, uh, you've noticed that uh, in 2020, that we're sort of refocusing our attentions for the Commission and trying to equip you to do the things that you've desired to do. Uh, so one of the things that you were all given this evening is your commission handbook, uh, which is very different from the monster that was given to you uh, by the folks in legal, walking you uh, through you know, appropriate roles, et cetera, and how you have to handle things on a legal basis. This really is nuts and bolts. This is the practical stuff uh, that you've received. Uh, there are a number of presentations that are included in there that you uh, had asked to be included in uh, a book like this. So the um, the, the diff uh, details and the budget uh, workshop details that uh, Ms. Sitton walked you through last month, CIP project overview um, that Tracy walked you through, uh, the overview that uh, Mr. Moody had provided regarding what maintenance services does, that's included there, uh, as well as a, a bunch of uh, just uh, other information, calendars, et cetera. And then we've left a few tabs at the back um, that you can add information as you accumulated over the course of, of meetings through the year. Um, so, and uh, this, the presentation that I'm about to walk through is also included in there. And again, this really is about defining um, the purpose, the roles, the function, and some of the activities that the Commission is engaged in on a regular basis. But this is now established in a way that we can actually look at this annually just kind of recap things uh, to remind folks of what it is we're doing and how it is that we're going to go about doing that. Uh, so uh, let's kick that off. So we call this nuts, bolts, and a monkey wrench. Nuts and bolts are the necessities. The monkey wrench is the stuff that just comes when you don't expect it, but always will. Complicates things a little bit, but you work through it. Um, so your purpose as a commission obviously is established by the Corona Municipal Code. You serve as an advisory um, committee to the City Council, and your focus is in three particular areas. You want to make sure that um, the Department is creating programs for all ages, uh, for the community, for all time. Uh, you're interested in the enhancement, the maintenance, et cetera, of parks and open spaces in the community. And finally, uh, what's going on in parkways, including the trees that are located therein. Um, those are issues that you take up here and then uh, advise the Council on what you think is, are appropriate steps for the future. Um, how do you do that? You do that, uh, your role is sort of defined um, in sort of five capacities. Um, most of them are in advocacy. Um, so for example, uh, one of the things you do, and you've done that numbers of times already this evening, is you advocate for the department, for the services, the programs, et cetera, that we provide. Um, you're sort of that outward face uh, to the public, and at the same time, you're providing feedback uh, to city council. Uh, you advocate, obviously, for the sustainability and the preservation of open spaces and parklands in the community. Uh, you promote safety, availability, and accessibility uh, on all of our facilities, whether they're open spaces or they're actual community centers, uh, et cetera. Uh, you uh, then uh, facilitate community engagement, and you do that in a variety of ways. We'll do that through surveys. You'll do that through public meetings. You'll go that, uh, you know, when you do openings for um, sports leagues, et cetera, you're engaging the community and bringing that information back so that it's a, it's a dialogue. It's running in both directions. And then finally, you advise the city council in all of those various areas. Uh, some of the activities that you consistently engage in, um, one, uh, we will bring back um, to you, in fact, next month. Uh, we'll look at both the department's proposed budget as well as the CIP budget. So there was a, a discussion a moment ago uh, about uh, the two 15, 16, 17 funds and then bond repayment funds. Um, you'll have your say through the CIP budgeting process. Um, as uh, uh, Tracy mentioned, Ms. Martin mentioned a, a moment ago, you know, we're in the midst of, of um, uh, going through the RFPs that were provided for a facilities assessment. Part of what they're going to be doing is 
is asking questions of the community, what the needs are, what the priorities are, so that information all can come back. And then once you've got that information, you've got policies, et cetera, then you can begin to plan on how things move forward, both in terms of maintenance, in terms of enhancement and development of, of parks and facilities. Uh, as you've already done this year, we'll bring back annual calendars. Uh, so you've seen the annual programming department, uh, department's programming calendar. Uh, you've seen uh, park cleanups calendar. Uh, and in, included in your packet is uh, an annual calendar of activities that we'll bring back for you on a consistent basis. So this sort of an overview, an overview of department budgets, capital improvement budgets, et cetera. Um, you also take a look at program-related policies. Uh, so last year, uh, you were all engaged in the process of working through an entire uh, redevelopment of the Youth Sports League's use of facilities. That was a, that's a major policy, and big decisions were made. And that we went through that really slowly over a six-month period to make sure that the policy was done right. Uh, you'll continue to engage in those processes as other policies are brought forward. Uh, program proposals. Uh, so we have brought to this body several times things that we are doing, ways that we're uh, enhancing or expanding programs. So as Mr. Last just walked you through an expansion and a, and a sort of a rebranding of summer concerts, um, those are the kinds of things that we will bring here and seek your input before we push them forward into the community. Um, you saw last year we did our first ever annual departmental report in which we looked at the numbers uh, of folks that we're engaging, the ways that we're engaging. Uh, we will bring that annual report back before you each year so that you can see what it is that you're directly involved in and the impact that you as a commission uh, and you're advising uh, both the city council but also this department in the in kinds of impacts that we're having in the broader uh, corona community. Uh, and then you'll um, take a look at, uh, as Ms. Martin provided you last month, an overview of projects, their status, uh, so that as you approve projects moving forward as, as part of that process and ultimately uh, they go to council, uh, we'll come back and give you updates on, on the process and on the progress that we're making on, on those things. And Ms. Martin did that at length uh, for you last month. And then uh, finally, you will provide input for the kinds of discussions that occur here uh, from month to month. Um, and you're already a part of that process. And then we started uh, this month uh, where we do a review of that agenda with the chair of, of this commission um, so that all of you knows in detail exactly what's going to be coming before you from month to month. So again, it's just about how you engage specifically uh, in activities. And then, and I'm not seeing it here, but there, in the, the presentation, there's also included uh, some key websites uh, and, and where information can be found. Because lots of times as you're out there engaging the community, questions come to you, where do I get this information? Where can I find that information? You can then provide uh, those sources of information to folks. Um, so again, this was just about sort of recapping um, the role, the responsibilities, and, and how those uh, have come to be uh, through the CMC. I'd be happy to answer any questions and listen to any feedback. Thank you. Commissioner Woods, and any questions or comments? No. Commissioner McCurry. Thank you. It was, it's very thorough. I look forward to looking through it. And um, I think that this is going to be a great resource for new commissioners. And I, I know I've only been on it a year, but this is all still good information that I look forward to reviewing. So thank you for putting this together. I appreciate it. I just want to say that I love the progress, and probably Commissioner Miller will agree with me. Having on our being on our second terms, haven't we come a long way, baby? Yes, we have. Yes, we have. Seven years. <laughs> and I think we've been, you know, honing for this kind of information. Everything that we had tonight was more of what I expect a Parks Commission to be able to do: to be able to talk about upcoming projects make a formal recommendation with an actual motion that the staff can carry forward, the financial information that the commission can understand and then be accountable to the public when asked, and, and to have the resources in a handbook for ourselves and new commissioners. So you guys have really set this up and made great progress this year. So I want to thank you. Well done. Yeah, I have to say, you know, I, this is my eighth year in uh, we had a very simple book eight years ago, and it had not been updated uh, up until today. Uh, so I know 
from this day forward, any new commissioners coming on, they're going to have a great tool to be a productive commission, which has been a long time coming. So I look forward to, to using it, implementing it the rest of this year, and for you guys to take it on into the future. So thank you. All righty. We also have in our packets the uh, Recreational uh, Participation Monthly Report. Do any of you have any questions on that report? Um, I do have one question. I know that, um, I think I read that the lifeguard certification classes are happening right now, and I was wondering if you had some kind of update on how, do we have any better progress with attendees in that? Do we know? Yes, um, I do not have those numbers off the top of my head, but we have actively been uh, pushing that out into the community. Uh, since we met uh, over the course of the summer, uh, following up on our uh, previous aquatic season, we are very ambitious in doing our recruitment. Uh, we have reached out to the schools. We have actually gone to career fairs. Uh, we're making contacts over at the colleges. We are staying engaged with um, other cities uh, and colleagues uh, to make sure when we have our lifeguard information go out this season, uh, it will come out in force, and we will have a big pool of uh, individuals uh, to apply to that. So uh, we're, of course, uh, um, a little on the fence because we just don't know how things are going to go. Um, lifeguarding is what it is, and it doesn't necessarily quite have the appeal it once did, um, but we're trying to do everything we can in our power to um, line that path uh, to that career choice uh, for individuals here in Corona. Thank you. I appreciate that update. I know I met with you um, individually about my passion for that need in our community of swim lessons and how we didn't quite have the staffing to provide as much as we could have. So I appreciate you guys putting forth all those extra efforts in the recruitment of those lifeguards. And hopefully when you guys bring the budget next month, we um, I know we talked about trying to be a little bit more competitive in pay for those lifeguards. So I hope that maybe we see that in the budget request as well so that we can offer these swim lessons to our community. I think it's one of the most important things that we offer our community um, at reasonable prices. So thank you. Any other comments in regards to the participation report? All righty, then we're going to move on uh, to the commission calendar. Now, and I believe some of you have a, uh, a schedule of the opening days for softball and uh, Little League. And I uh, didn't know if you guys wanted to discuss to see if we can divvy up any of those times and dates. So the only one I'm in town for is the 22nd. So I will put my name down for Corona Girls Softball. Perfect. And that will work. Is this, this will be my first opening day. Um, is this something where I contact the president of the board and tell them that I'm coming? and Or do I just show up? Uh, typically, they will send out invitations to us, um, but we will communicate back to them uh, who of you will be in attendance for those opening days, and typically, uh, one of us will also be uh, there as well. Yep. In the March 7th Corona National, I'll be available at El Cerrito. Okay. And then... Uh... I can do uh, the 29th, I can do the Corona American Little League. I'm out the other two weekends, okay. so. And I, I can do uh, Corona Pony on the 7th. You're doing Corona, uh, American National? Corona National? Yeah. Okay. So we'll talk to uh, Commissioner Almosey, see if he can, if he's available on the 29th for uh, West Corona. We'll see if he's available for that one, then it looks like that we've got it all divvied up. All righty. Uh, any other commissioners with the, if you open up your binders, there is the, the calendar of events for the month that you, or actually for the whole year. You got, that's it right there. If there's any other questions that you want to bring forward, if not, we can go ahead and it will be updated monthly as we have our meetings. You'll provide us a new yeah, update. There are any as there's changes on this, then they will be presented to us, and then we'll just replace it with what's already in our book. Okay. All righty. I think then we will go ahead to uh, reports and comments. 
So Commissioner Woods, would you have any uh, reports, comments that you'd like to bring forward this evening? I want to cover the mic on. I want to bring forward the, as I said before, the stellar work of the city being able to clean up after the wind and also the TAC. Thank you all so much for coming and, and being present. Someone switched. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Tristan Galvin and I'm a TAC member. All right, thank you. And thank you so much for putting together this commission handbook. Um, this was, is definitely, I just took a second to glance through it, but it definitely has the elements that I feel like we need to do the job that we are charged to do. So this is definitely a helpful thing, and I look forward to diving into this and seeing how much more we can give to this commission. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner McCurry? I don't have anything to report other than thank you for all of the to all the staff for their reports and time and to the youth who are here as always I appreciate your guys's input and looking forward to your Harry Potter summer programming. All right. Thank you. Thank you for what? I'll just briefly report um, that I trained three members of the public on the park ambassador program to be park ambassadors. So, um, on Monday, I met with two gentlemen at Surface Club Park with Mr. Moody and two other staff members, and we went over some of their concerns and ongoing issues that they were having. And I walked them through, and we discussed the Park Ambassador Program and the C-Click Fix. I was passed another resident, passed me, um, got my name, and we talked on the phone. And she was kind of already doing some of those things, so I talked her through all of this over the phone and got her to get the C-Click Fix app on her phone. So I'm hoping that, um, I, I spoke to Mr. Moody, I'm hoping that we can continue to kind of grow this program. We need to, he's gonna look into it, but we need some funding and some staff support. And being that, you know, the staff has been very um, tasked with so many things and since the recession, and we just haven't been able to grow with everything we needed to grow with. So he's gonna look into that for us. So that was good, and then, um, the homeless strategic plan went out into the community, and I've already been to the initial uh, study session, but that's another thing that I know that you all were invited to go to, and the meeting is going on right now. I'm, I'm gonna go and see, but it's something that, as a commission, I'm hoping that we will take an active role in understanding what's going on, and I look forward to seeing you there. The next thing is the Trails Master Plan. We're this, yeah, the Trails Master Plan meeting is February 25th at 6 p.m. at Circle City Center, and that's allowing ourselves and the public to have some input into that whole process. And that's all I have for right now. The survey, oh, and the survey is online. So you can look at the city website and pick up the survey or Facebook, so, as well. Thank you for Three. mentioning the trails. I meant, forgot to mention that. And also this evening there is a the Forest Service is seeking public comment regarding their um, grant for public off-road motorized vehicle access. And um, that meeting's taking place right now. Um, and I believe that it's open until nine and it's the address if you are interested. It is being held at 1461 Rimpaw Avenue. So I'm hoping to run over there maybe and uh, check in over there. So if anyone else is interested in the Cleveland National Forest and your recreation vehicles, check it out. All right, All right. Uh, just a couple things that I would like to go ahead and bring before closing. Uh, earlier this evening, uh, it was uh, brought up our 2020 corporate sponsorships for our events for the, uh, the community this year. Uh, I encourage all corporate and uh, community sponsorships they will be uh, put online here here in the next couple weeks for all of our events, for our summer events, for our 4th of July, our summer concerts, and our, our winter projects also. So I encourage all uh, corporate and family-owned businesses here in the community to uh, contact uh, Sadie Cowden at the city uh, to uh, get involved and to get back to your community. It only will enhance uh, the experience to all of our community members. Uh, and then uh, lastly, I just want to remind everybody in regards to the uh, 2020 census, the census is coming. It, uh, most people will be receiving 
documentation uh, beginning of the end of February, beginning of March. Uh, you'll be reminded several times throughout the month of March for uh, participation in the census. It is an important event to take place and participate in. Uh, for all of you out in our community, uh, you need to respond to our census. Uh, this is vital to our funding for state and federal funding. So for those of you, when you see this documentation coming through your mail, uh, please take the 10 to 15 minutes to fill it out and return it because this is how we will get further funding in the future. So I just encourage everybody to take the time to fill out their 2020 census. Uh, at that time, at, or at this time, we will go ahead and uh, there are no other questions. Oh, there are gonna be a few more announcements to be brought forward. I just have one. Okay, go right ahead. I wanna make sure that the community and the commissioners know to look for the Main Street Parade applications. Those will go out next week. We hope to have them out on Tuesday. And there will be three different deadlines with three different fees. So if you can register by the end of March, I think it's March 20, um, April 22nd, $50. About a month later, $75. June 5th, $100. And we'll be pushing that out and promoting that hard. We usually average around 80 participants in the parade. We'd like to see that go up. And so uh, please look for that, and I'll let you know when it goes out. Right. Thank you very much. So if there's no other comments or questions, we will bring the meeting closed. Thank you.